Number one, to come into the truth movement, if you're really concerned about truth, you've got to check an ego at the door, okay? You do not know everything. A lot of you think you do, but you don't. I certainly don't. Through your school system, through your education that you're so proud of, that builds your whole ego, your whole value in life, it's impossible for you to discard it and admit you were deceived. Let me tell you something. You've been deceived. It's not your fault. You can let go of your ego. Nobody's going to laugh at you except other people that can't let go of their ego. But people that have caught on to the con and realized the power grab that's taken place, they're not going to laugh at you. They're going to welcome you. I'm telling you again, the worst thing they fear is the hive mind. The one thing they fear is 300 million people in the United States coming together to, on one topic and saying, this makes no sense. We need answers. Why is the flat earth so important? Because it shows the deception. There are enough reasonable questions to create reasonable suspicion that we've been lied to. They can't afford to keep being asked. There's enough to see that it's not what we've been told. And once that is revealed, everything these governments have done becomes illegitimate. That is why it matters, and that is why they will do anything they can to keep us fighting, keep us distracted, keep us at odds against each other, just like the entire world, whether it be Christians against Muslims, blacks against whites, government that truly has your best interest your freedom at heart or does it sound like a government that wants to keep you constantly busy on paying attention to anything but what they're doing and this truth movement is no different because as soon as the topic starts going where everybody could actually make a stand and say hey wait a minute this needs to be answered this is a big one and I don't care what anybody says, the flat earth, the shape of the earth is the biggest conspiracy and has been used to manipulate, deceive, and control us all. If God forbid everybody came and started demanding answers and once they can't provide those answers, people realize they are busted. It can't be a mistake. It can't be anything but the deception and control mechanism it is. Flat Earth is not a PSYOP. Flat Earth destroys the PSYOP. Every PSYOP that's been used to control us. For as long as they've known about it. So this system has been in power and control for hundreds of years. Ever since they convinced the rest of the world that they didn't know where they live. And created this fantastical scenario to make people feel insignificant and to follow those that appear to know better, that are just better liars, deceivers, that have no conscience, and will do everything and anything to everybody and anybody they can to keep that power. Because people are waking up. And no matter how much they try to suppress this flat earth movement, oh, it's gonna keep moving one way or another. You can see it, people are waking up. So now, louder than ever, I can hear that clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's a religion. It's all a religion. You know why? Because government is a religion. Government is the majority of the world's true God. Because they believe that these people have some sort of power. That, and they've even convinced us that we've given it to them. They still have us convinced in 2015, the age of instant communication, that we for some reason need representatives in 
a city that's not even part of this country called Washington, D.C. to represent us. That in this age of instant communication, we can't represent ourselves for some reason. That's how deep the brainwashing and the indoctrination has gone. They still have you convinced that this government should be run on the same system it was run when people were back on horseback using telegraphs and Pony Express. That's why they had these representatives had to go to Washington so that they could go back home to this group of a few hundred thousand people and say, well, what do you guys want? Okay, I'll go tell them. And they travel for a week to Washington DC or however long it takes. That's why you needed representatives. Now I can push this button and talk to anybody in the world. What the fuck do I need a representative for? Because it's the power system, the control system. They have to keep indoctrinating you in schools, teaching you about everything and anything but where you live. Now they have to treat out all the money that was going into the educational system to control your mind isn't working anymore. People see how stupid everybody is. That is the failure of government. See, flat earth proves the failure of government, period. Because it's either deceived and lied and indoctrinated us all into a false system, or it's completely failed in making people realize if they really live on a globe, a lot of people don't see it. So your education system has failed now, hasn't it? In order to believe it, We've got to believe a bunch of math formulas that only a few people in the world can supposedly understand and we've just got to take your word for it. Here in this age of all this technology where I can get on this phone, record this video and send it out to the world, they can't seem to find a way to easily, simply prove to everybody on the planet where they live. It always depends on some formulas that the majority of the people don't understand. And again, the people that do understand it, don't understand it. They either that know it's bullshit or they believe it's bullshit because it's just religion and it's not proven. It's just tailor uh, twisted formulas to fit their agenda. It doesn't wash out in reality. What difference does it make? What difference does it make? Yeah, that's their favorite line. A lot of people, what difference does it make? You can't figure out what difference it makes? If you can't figure out what difference it makes that the people running your world have fucking lied to you over and over your whole life, if you can't figure out that someone lying to you is trying to control you, suppressing of information, of knowledge, is control. Deception of information and knowledge is a form of control. So what difference does it make? It makes a big difference because once they start omitting information or lying about information about where you live, they're doing it to control you, period. Why am I having to explain this to critical thinkers in the truth movement? Where you live, it's been a lie the whole time, and if everybody would just come together and demand answers, they would be in checkmate. They would not know what the fuck to do. They cannot prove it. They can't prove the globe because it doesn't exist. This is basically the biggest thing you could possibly lie about. The best way to brainwash the whole world is to lie to the whole world about what the world is. They've stolen our mind from us and stuck us on a cartoon ball. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, it has to be. Everything in the sky revolves around us, just as it appears if you look up and use your own eyes, your own senses. The vanishing point of perspective from your point of view, which is what the horizon line is. It is not the curvature of the earth, as you've been taught. They stole your mind. They stole my mind. You've been fed a false system. You've been shown CGI images with a ball earth with a horizon that curves. Of course, you can measure curvature if it actually existed. It's been tested over and over again and found to have no curvature whatsoever. You've just been lied to and shown pictures and you believe those. Science, in fact, shows that the earth is flat and motionless. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace 
is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. I just recently gained my mind back. It's flat. That begs the question, hey, what the hell have you been showing us this ball for all this time? What have you been doing with our money? Did you guys go to space? Is evolution actually real? Did you guys just make this shit up? These are the questions we need to be asking. This is an amazing monumental uh, sort of feat of space exploration. This is the Galileo satellite. Full authentic NASA imagery of the Galileo satellite. Must have cost like tri a trillion dollars for this fucking operation. Very expensive. This is the Galileo satellite. They never knew it would go that far and reach Jupiter. You know, they didn't know. It's the first time anything goes that far. It managed to get there. There's Jupiter. There's one of its moons. I mean, it's clearly lining up to take some really good photos of Jupiter. Immediately followed by a camera satellite. <laughs> Perfectly composing the whole shot out in outer space. Amazing, eh? What the cameras could do when they fly. It's into outer space, a place we've never been to. That's amazing. Look at that. That's perfect. That's like the photo of the year, if you ask me. For a fucking satellite to be able to like... Uh -huh. You know, like wake up in outer space. We didn't even know we could do that. You know, and it, uh, unbelievable. I give it the I give it the NASA. Let's go to another photo here. Another photo. This is good too. Oh, let's zoom in. I love that iMovie sort of effect. I'm really in the gas. But how am I supposed to go? Yeah, that's the Earth. From there, that point of view I've never seen. Oh, what is that? I guess this is a photo of the Hubble telescope taking a picture of itself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's an authentic photo of the Hubble telescope out there doing its job. Isn't that amazing how they could take a photo of the thing taking photos? <laughs> out in outer space. Unbelievable. You know, they never crossed Antarctica, but let's go to the moon and take pictures of shit out in space. That's fucking unbelievable. You know, the instruments won't work in Antarctica. It's too fucking cold, but hey. <laughs> Let's go somewhere we, where we don't know the instruments will work. That's unbelievable. I can't, it just boggles my mind how they do this stuff. All right, next one, solar powered, by the way, solar powered. Look at that, environmental. Environmental in outer space. Okay, this is an official, sorry to give you shit there, Dan, you're doing a great job. But uh, this is an official, this is an authentic, apparently, from NASA. This is an authentic NASA photo of the, the, the Arctic, the North Pole. By applause, how many people think that this is a, uh, um, a painting. That plus, how many people think this is bullshit? <laughs> there we go, that's Europe. The sun's hitting it. Applause, you think that's a photo? <laughs> well, satellite imagery, man, there's infrared and shit. All right, next image. This is Ali Lapia. Next image. This is Ali Lapia without an Adobe Photoshop shading. <laughs> And this is the texture that I cut out with a circle to create the fake fucking moon called Olympia. <laughs> Are you telling me that we just got to take black construction paper, cut out a circle, put it on fucking peanut butter and jam spills, and say, hey, it's Ipapopo. <laughs> and you fucking swallow that shit every day? It's funny, I do this today because the Google, you saw the Google today, they had the Hubble telescope. It looked like a kid's drawing. Did you fucking see that today? That's why I'm, you know, I'm doing this today. So this is the next one, you can go to the next one. That, that's it, I mean, I just take out, I say it's not a circle, it's not a sphere. Right away, what do you have in your brain? Well, you think it's flat and there's water falling off into the fucking outer space, like Bugs Bunny? So either you have a square or, or a circle in your head. Either Coke or Pepsi with the shape of the planet. What if it's bigger? What if there's more land that they're hiding from? There might be more land out there that they're hiding from us. Why would they want to hide more land? Well, imagine if resources such as gold, silver, oil, imagine if these resources aren't scarce. Imagine if they're plentiful. Imagine that there's other lands out there, untouched, unclaimed, that if you could get to it, you could stake out a claim, take as much as you want. Now that's happened before, and it could possibly happen again. Maybe that's something worth lying about. Other land, other worlds, more resources. What if there's people on these lands? 
What if there's people on these lands who don't know that we exist? It kind of makes you think about the long lost city of Atlantis. Maybe it's just, I don't know, 100,000 miles to your right. Now let's go the opposite way. There could be a dome or a firmament over your head. That's something worth lying about. Why would they lie about that? Oh, I don't know, because it completely disproves the Big Bang and 100% proves that we are divinely created intelligently by a higher power of some kind. Now, if we live in an enclosed system, that means man can't leave and go to any other worlds. That means we are special. It is just us. We aren't a speck of nothingness in an infinite space vacuum. We are very special if this is the case, if this is the only world covered by a dome. Now, why would they lie? Oh, I don't know. How about $18 billion annually? If NASA gets to steal $18 billion from their taxpayers, well, even if you don't believe anything else I've told you, the bottom line could be they stole your money for a fake trip to the moon. They stole your money for a fake rover on Mars. They stole your money to show you CGI and cartoon pictures of the globe. $18.4 billion annually? That might be another reason to lie. So mainstream science tells us that the Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago, after a big bang that created the known universe. This wild theory is widely accepted as fact, and it's mechanically repeated by most people due to the fact that it's what public schools teach to the kids without challenge. There is absolutely no possible way to determine whether or not an event took place that long ago. It's actually very strange that anyone would believe this nonsense. Mainstream science also tells us that life on Earth evolved into monkeys, which eventually evolved into us. There's only one huge gaping problem with the theory of evolution. We are not only missing one link between monkeys and humans, but we are missing hundreds, if not thousands, of evolutionary links. Maybe more. They want us to believe that one day, we fell out of a monkey's ass, and we landed on a spinning ball that's advancing through outer space at ridiculous speeds. We are being deceived. So how does Hollywood brainwash you? Well, one way is like this. They begin their movies on a globe, and then they zoom in to whatever the first scene is. Real clever way to brainwash you in the very first scene of any movie you see. Universal Studios is so bad, they use this goddamn globe as their logo, as their intro to every single movie that they make. At the beginning of every single movie Universal makes, you're going to see the spinning globe logo. So it doesn't even matter what the movie's about. You're going to be brainwashed. No video. Real video of the real Earth spinning in space, which you could all like to see, actually exists. This is what he's shown. This is last year from the Discover satellite, the epic um, camera. This is actually the dark side of the moon. Going past the Earth. There's the Earth spinning. And there's the dark side of the moon. The only problem with that is the moon's supposed to be orbiting the Earth, not just flying straight past it. Your eyes aren't fooled. Yeah, you've got your own senses, trust your senses, this is clearly CGI, but you go to NASA's website and they will claim this was taken from a million miles away from Earth by the Discover satellite. You will notice also that the clouds don't really move. I mean, they move across, but they don't change, don't swirl, they don't change direction. Um, five hours, 3.50 to 8.45 is nearly five hours of time-lapse photography. Those... Cloud, those, those clouds do not move at all. You ever been mind fucked before? We don't have a picture of our Earth, except for the nice composite fake images NASA gives you to make sure you keep believing you're in a ball and keep arguing on their behalf, keep fighting for them, keep telling people we went to the moon simply because you can't let your mind think of the possibility 
that someone lied to you. The government lied to you. They can't lie. They're my government. Believe me, it's hard for all of us. That's crazy. The government doesn't lie to people. What difference does it make if it's a globe or if it's flat? They're stealing your money and showing you cartoons and CGI. Wouldn't that make a difference if it was a globe or if it was flat? Because they keep showing you cartoons of a globe. They show you CGI of a globe. They show you Hollywood trickery of a globe. They're stealing your fucking money. There's a quote by Tesla. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. And they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. That's what happened with the globe theory. Uh, everybody knew the world was flat until one day some guy came along and said, Oh no, no, it's, it's a ball. We're, we're spinning through space. We're circling the sun. A lie is a lie, even if everybody believes it. And truth is truth, even if no one believes it. Just our common sense, everyday perception of the Earth, it is flat as far as we can tell. Uh, it is motionless as far as we can tell. And everything in the sky is revolving around us as far as we can tell. If nobody told us otherwise, we'd logically assume that the Earth was flat, motionless, with everything in the sky revolving around us. And you can prove that this is the case as well, for instance, with the horizon. As you rise up, no matter how high you go on the top of Mount Everest, or if you go in a balloon higher and higher, we've gotten independent balloons have gone up with cameras. The horizon remains flat all the way around and rises to the eye of the camera all the way up, totally flat, and rises to the eye of the observer. So that's one proof. Now, if the Earth were a ball, no matter how big, the horizon is said to be the curvature of the ball. If you were to go to NASA, it's, it's all fraud, it's all fake. Um, pretty much everything NASA puts out is, is fraudulent. There are no images of Earth from space. Put an end to this topic once and for all, turn the Hubble round and show us um, Earth in real time, but they will not do it. They can't do it. It, 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 can't, it doesn't exist literally doesn't exist. Looking at these images of Earth, including the one they called the Big Blue Marble, which is, was released in 2002, I think. Um, zoom into it with Photoshop, you'll see where they've used the clone tool in Photoshop to take a picture of one, one of the clouds and stamp it in various places around the, the, the picture. They got lazy. If the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference, there must exist a curvature drop of eight inches times the mile when you square the mile. One mile means there should be an eight inch curvature drop. Two miles, two times two times eight. 
It's 32. That's 32 inch drop. Three miles would be a 72 inch drop. And this would exponentially continue. Here's the longest bridge in the world. The Danyang Kongchong Grand Bridge in China. 102.4 miles long. There should exist nearly 7,000 feet of curvature drop in that bridge. 7,000 foot curvature drop. Do you see it? It ain't there. Look at the horizon. It's flat. I took a picture across the Great Lakes from Michigan and was able to see, I believe it's Chicago, um, which he shouldn't have been able to see. And the, uh, yeah, and the news, the television um, station basically said it was a mirage. I found this photo, Randmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Very interesting here. Here's what's happening. This is a, a good example of a superior mirage. So Joshua was on the Lake Michigan shore. He was looking towards the west and Chicago's beyond the horizon. Should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky. Morning, morning. They always say it's a mirage, but um, for a mirage to happen, you have to have very specific atmospheric um, conditions. You know, it's not a mirage, it's simply that you, you know, you're looking across a plane. Now, how come in all these ball pictures, man, you can see all the continents pretty much, and there's just a little bit of clouds here and there. Man, it's like some of these pictures, like there's some where they show the Earth at night, and you can see all the lights and stuff. It's like, you're telling me the entire continent doesn't have clouds? The entire <laughs> fucking continent? Like, you can see Africa and all these lights and all this stuff. Like, you know, if you turn on your porch light, I guess you can see it from space, apparently. And it's like there's no clouds in some of these pictures. And they spelled out the word sex right recently, probably a few months ago, in one of the clouds. But, you know, if they do their research, they say, well, those are composites. And I said, well, how come they copy and paste the clouds on some of these? And they use the same cloud form. Like, if you're going to make a composite, make a composite, but you shouldn't be copy and pasting clouds. That means you're, you're adding stuff that's not real. Yeah, and the thing is, those pictures that you're talking about, the blue marble pictures, you know, I think there's about maybe eight to ten of them over time that uh, NASA has put out, and you're absolutely right. None of those pictures look the same. The color of the water is different. Like you said, the continents are different sizes. It's just unbelievable. And I think what happened originally was they would put these things out and nobody was paying any attention to it, you know? And then all of a sudden now, people are paying attention to it, and now they're pulling these pictures in, and it's an obvious fraud. What? And the thing is, there's supposedly tens of thousands of satellites orbiting Earth. We can't get any close-ups of Earth. We can't get a view of Australia with the buildings upside down. And they'll look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but really, you are the sane one for asking real questions. Here's the, uh, the picture of the Earth from, uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But 
uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You've never seen that with your eyes from that scale of a model, that point of view from outside of the planet's surface. Well, here's the, uh, the first image that sold the whole thing. 1482, this is when they came up with this idea. We are on that thing, it's a ball. Hey, we should go to the North and the South Pole. We didn't do it yet, it's a fucking ball. Hey, nobody's even like jumped up high enough to see if it is a ball. They can't do that, we don't have planes yet, it's a ball. You know what, we adopted this whole model like four or five years before the airplane. 400 years before the airplane, pretty much, like, 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 like beginning of the 1900s. They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper. It's funny that we said that this is this, this is what we're in right now, this is what we're on, before any instrument approved. This is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? Now, as soon as you say the topic is civil disobedience, you're saying our problem is civil disobedience. That is not our problem. Our problem is civil obedience. I think our, all our society is run by insane people for insane objects, mm. objectives. You know, and I think that's what I sussed when I was 16 and 12, way down the line. But I expressed it differently all through my life. It's the same thing I'm expressing all the time. But now I can put it into that sentence that I think we're being run by maniacs for maniacal mean uh, ends, you know. If, if anybody can put on paper what our government and the American government, etc., and the Russian, Chinese, what they are actually trying to do, you know, and how, what they think they're doing, mm. I'd be very pleased to know what they think they're doing. I think they're all insane. You know, but I'm liable to be put away as insane for expressing that. Mm. You know, that's what's insane about.